Aaron Yeager's transformation during the course of the series is a great example of what I appreciate most about the writing in Attack on Titan, the psychologically rich and coherent characters. Hajime Sayama has crafted Aaron's psychological development in such a realistic and sensible way that it would really be a waste to not analyze it in the same manner. And a lot of you seem to agree with me. So today we're going to analyze how Aaron Yeager's transformation came to be and more specifically how he developed his relentless motivation and fighting spirit spanning from season 1 all the way to the final season. By understanding how his mindset and motivation came to be, I believe we can learn a few pointers for ourselves on how to build our own relentless motivation in real life. I also made sure to not include any manga spoilers for this topic on purpose so everyone can enjoy this video while we patiently wait for the official release of the final season part 2. Now if you're ready, let's get started. Motivation is what most would describe as the fuel behind our discipline, the power that keeps us going when we want to give up. The Oxford Dictionary provides two definitions for the word that sound like they're saying the same thing but are actually quite distinct. The first one defines it as the reason why somebody does something, while the second as the feeling of wanting to do something. The first one is defining motivation as a reason, while the second defines it as a feeling. Although correlated, those two definitions are drastically different in terms of actionability. There's a big difference between understanding the reason behind your actions and the feeling of wanting to perform them. However, by having a clear and purposeful reason, Aaron has shown us that the desire follows. Aaron was able to consistently maintain his motivation towards his goals because he was focused on his reason. In other words, the reason regulated his desire. And to clarify that reason to yourself, you need to understand your why. Aaron's reason behind his motivation lies in his beliefs and values pertaining to freedom. He believes that everyone is born free, and because everyone is born free, freedom is thus a birthright and should not be denied. That is Aaron's personal value, and it became the driving force behind his goals. Beliefs are the assumptions we accept are true about the world, but no one is really born with a set of beliefs. Beliefs stem from our life experiences, from what we hear, read, and learn and they direct our values, what we consider important in life. And those values regulate our behavior, our motivation to do things, basically. We are all tasked to navigate our own subjective internal experience, and that is why your personal beliefs and values are the foundation for your motivation. Once you've clarified to yourself what it is that you find meaningful, it is then easy to set for yourself a meaningful goal that will motivate you consistently, just like Aaron has done. Joining the Survey Corps, going beyond the walls, infiltrating Marley, underlying all of Aaron's goals was his motivation driven by his value about freedom. This value was first highlighted when Armin presented to Aaron his book about the outside world. Now, the book is what brought to the surface Aaron's value about freedom, but the belief was already instilled by his mother, Carla Yeager. Because he was born into this world. This phrase is repeated by Aaron throughout the show and was emphasized very early on in the series. These words symbolize Aaron's core belief. This scene is a powerful one as it encapsulates his burning desire for freedom literally at the expense of his family. We see Aaron turn his back on them and they, as he delivers the phrase, burn to ashes, making place for only himself and his desire. It shows how Aaron prioritizes freedom over a comfortable but devoid of freedom life with his family. Freedom is what he deems meaningful and most important in his life. That is the core belief that motivated Aaron Yeager to keep moving forward and is also why we should understand our own beliefs and values before we decide on our personal goals. When you understand those, you will deepen your self-awareness. To do so, you can use a method I call the ladder of whys. Imagine yourself standing on the top of a ladder in the sky, and for each why you answer about your desires, you go down a step from that ladder, resulting in a clearer view of the world with each step until you reach stability on the ground. The ground represents your ultimate truth, 
your beliefs. Your clouded view at the top represents your clouded judgment about yourself as you have not taken the time to self-reflect yet. You need to ask yourself why over and over again and answer each one of them eloquently until you get to your deepest values and beliefs, until you reach the ground. It could be very easy and quick or very difficult and time consuming depending on how well you know yourself. Your first question should be, why do I want the things that I'm chasing right now? If we were to apply this concept to Aaron, it would go something like this. Why do I want to join the Survey Corps? Because I want to see the outside world. Why do I want to see the outside world? Because the book Armin showed me really intrigued me. Why did his book intrigue me? Because I want to see the ocean, the fields of sand, the land of ice. Why do I want to see those things? Because they're beautiful and I should be free to go anywhere I want and experience those beautiful things rather than being caged inside these walls. Why should I be free? Because freedom is a birthright and I was born into this world. Why is freedom a birthright? Because everyone is born free. That is Aaron's final truth, his assumption about life, his belief, everyone is born free. The letter of Y symbolizes how each step brings you closer to the ground. And as the clouds clear up, you also start to see clearer. This self-reflection method allows you to clarify your beliefs and values, to find what is meaningful in your life, to find what grips you. Whether it is to become rich, to help others, to find that special someone, or to achieve success, whatever that means to you, there is always a reason behind our ambitions and desires. And that reason is determined by your beliefs and values, which is why you should always align your personal goals with them. Training for the military to join the Survey Corps was aligned with Aaron's values, so it was easy for him to stay motivated consistently even after messing up over and over again. When people feel a lack of purpose or don't feel motivated by their goals, it's because their pursuit doesn't match their beliefs. When that realization hits, it is time for a change, either in goals or in beliefs. Beliefs are obviously much harder to change, but not impossible. I won't go into that because that's a separate topic and video, but that is when people make drastic life changing decisions such as separating themselves from lifelong partners, careers, or a change in lifestyle. That is why your motivation strongly relies on aligning your beliefs and values to your goals. Once that's done, it is helpful to increase your internal locus of control. People with an internal locus of control believe that events in their life are primarily a result of their own actions. For example, when receiving exam results, people with a dominant internal locus of control tend to praise or blame themselves and their abilities, while people with an external locus of control would praise or blame external factors, such as the teacher or the exam itself. Aaron is, without a doubt, leaning more towards the internal orientation as he often blamed himself and his incompetence for his outcomes, believing that the course of action he chose to take was the reason for his failures. This belief of his is actually highlighted as early as episode 1 when he failed to save his mother. I will carry you. These words highlighted Aaron's weakness because deep down, he knew, and so did we, that he wouldn't have been strong enough to do so. They were words of desperation. Without a doubt, this event made him ruminate about the idea that if he was stronger, he would have been able to save his mother. Her death became a reminder of his lack of strength and ability. To not be able to save your own mother dying right in front of you would no doubt create a tremendous sense of guilt and shame in Aaron. If only he was strong enough to lift the debris. If only he was strong enough to carry his mother on his back. If only he was strong enough to kill the Titan. This feeling of guilt pushed him to become stronger and to improve his abilities so he wouldn't have to go through this awful feeling again. His failure turned into a call to action because if his failures are a result of his actions, then by default, so are his successes. You cannot have one without the other. If you are blaming yourself for your outcome, you are essentially telling yourself that you have the power to control those failures and to turn them into victories. We know that in real life, we can't control 100% of all our outcomes, so it is only logical and realistic that we fall somewhere between the two extremes. No one has 100% internal or 100% external locus of control. It is important to understand the value of each extreme and Levi Ackerman highlights this value to Aaron during their run with the female titan. Levi tells Aaron to decide based on what would lead to minimum or no regret. 
The reality is that the so-called perfect solution is only obvious in hindsight. I explained this concept in more detail from a perspective of regret in my video about Levi Ackerman, but basically what Levi is implying here is that there are often times when a perfect solution is simply out of our reach because we don't have all the information and because life is unpredictable. We can only make decisions based on our experience, which is limited in information, which is why you should view your chances of success as what it is, a probability. What you do may not give you a 100% success rate, but wouldn't a 90% rate be good enough in most cases for you to feel confident in your decision? Understand that your chances of success are not black and white. You don't have 100% control over everything, so while it is beneficial to lean towards an internal locus of control generally, it is just as important to reserve a percentage to the external orientation so you don't blame yourself for circumstances that are out of your control. This would be detrimental to your success and be unproductive. Also, both locus of controls are self-fulfilling. Whether you think you can do it or you can't, you are right. I'm not saying that belief is all you need, but it is a basic ingredient. Without it, your success rate directly plummets to zero as you wouldn't even try to give yourself a chance for a positive outcome. When Aaron learned that the origin of his founding titan power was due to external factors during the Underground Chapel episodes, it shifted his locus of control. It made him feel hopeless, that none of his decisions mattered, and his inaction basically guaranteed his own demise. Luckily, Levi was there to remind him of their talk and Historia hit him with a call to action. The belief that you can affect the outcome is only part of it though. Not only do you need to believe that you can affect the outcome, but you need to believe that you can affect it positively. Which brings us to our last point, self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is the belief in one's capability to succeed in a specific situation. To attain this belief, you need to build for yourself a realistic perception of your influence on the outcome. In the final season, we see the full transformation in Eren's belief in his capabilities. I would say that Eren built this belief via three mediums. The first one being what is called mastery of experiences. Performing our tasks successfully over and over again will reinforce our belief that we can make it happen. This mastery refers to the experience we gain when we take on a new challenge and succeed. From his training as a soldier to the discovery of the Titan's origins, Eren slowly built his competency as a fighter and a Titan shifter, reinforcing his belief in his capabilities. From being a kid incapable of protecting his own mother to becoming humanity's hope. Aaron made tangible progress consistently throughout his journey. His first biggest personal accomplishment was probably mastering the Odium gear. He managed to master the basics even though his equipment was faulty. This seemingly small success became the root of his belief in his capabilities. <laughs> That was the beginning of a snowball effect that would lead to many more successes. Of course, there were failures on the way also, but those became stepping stones to bigger success stories as we know now. Note that those subsequent successes did not happen coincidentally. Going back to our internal locus of control discussion, yes, there were parts of it that were out of Aaron's control, but a lot of it came from deliberate practice. Deliberate practice refers to practice that focuses on improving performance rather than mindless repetitions. It is purposeful and systematic. For example, it is more productive to practice something that is slightly above your current skill level rather than repeat something you are already familiar with. For example, a guitar player should practice chord progressions they find somewhat difficult rather than play the same song they like over and over again. While we may not have seen it display in its entirety, there were multiple scenes that alluded to Eren's deliberate practice off screen. His combat skills, his time transformation training, and his hardening skills are some that come to mind. The fruits of his labor are showcased during his battles. We see Eren using Annie's grappling method against the Armored Titan, a technique he didn't have an answer for in the beginning. We see how his time transformation stamina's training with Hanji paid off against the Warhammer Titan as he transformed three times, an incredible feat considering he couldn't even control his transformation in season one. 
His fight against the Warhammer Titan is a great display of everything Eren has learned, not only in terms of combat skills and stamina, but also in terms of strategy, emotional control, and vigilance. We see how Eren grew out of his emotional and reckless self, and it is clear to me that those two attributes were improved by watching Erwin Smith and Levi Ackerman. Social modeling is the theory that we can learn to behave in certain ways by watching others do what they do. Seeing others complete a task successfully increases our belief that we too have the capabilities to succeed in similar tasks. Aaron's analytical and tactical skills can be connected to Armin Alert and Erwin Smith as they were both highly influential in his life and are both skilled strategists. Aaron witnessed firsthand that brute force and anger does not win all battles. On multiple occasions, strategy and planning was actually the key to winning those battles, such as Armin's distraction plan against Berthold and his convincing speech to the stationary guards, or Erwin's trap against the female Titan and his coup d'etat. During the fight against the Warhammer Titan, Eren was calm and observant which allowed him to locate the Warhammer Titan's hiding place in the midst of a full-blown war, and was also quick on his feet to use the Jaw Titan to break the protective crystal when he realized that he could not break it himself. His observant and analytical approach is reminiscent of Aaron Smith's approach and his vigilance of Levi Ackerman. Because Aaron witnessed them both succeed with those approaches over time, and because they both played a mentor role in Aaron's life, it would make sense that he learned by watching them. Erwin and Levi are only two of many examples of who Aaron has learned from, but we can clearly see the impact that the people around him have had on his approach and skill set, demonstrating the impact of social modeling and self-efficacy. And that is how Aaron Yeager built his motivation, or fighting spirit, determination, tatakai, whatever you want to call it. We can build a solid foundation for our motivation, similar to his character, by understanding our beliefs and values, increasing our internal locus of control, and self-efficacy. Aaron's psychological growth and coherency is what makes him such a gripping character to follow, and is now one of the most badass characters in the show. The one that keeps moving forward. The usurper, Aaron Yeager. A lot of you have requested his character, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you've read the manga, you will know that I've refrained from sharing certain plot points for the sake of this topic, but rest assured, I will do my best to tackle those points in future videos. Also, I just want to make it clear that while I want to prioritize other characters in Attack on Titan, I'm not limiting myself to making only one video per character, so you may see more of Eren Jaeger in the future. Maybe? We'll see. In the meantime, if you enjoyed the content, a like, comment, or subscribe will be very helpful for my channel. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook for additional content, and thank you for watching. I'll see you all on the next one.